Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 3. We're on episode 5. Uh, last episode we start getting into embers, which you can see over there, and I've just noticed that the top of the stamper is not lit up. That could go badly on a blood moon, couldn't it? Can we... Yeah, there we go, all sorted. Um, so I haven't done a lot in between episodes. I've been taking... Oh god. Oh my god. Pig, no. No bad pig. Alright. <laughs> so yeah, I've been taking care of the uh, passive mobs, trying to get some fluid cows, and you can see I've actually set up a, a larger spawning platform over there, and... Oh, we have a fluid cow. We actually have a fluid cow. Nice. Um, also... The mob farm kind of backed up. Uh, the problem is I've set up a loot bag opener. Um, what we're doing is we're just taking out the common loot bags, getting all of the drops from them. Um, they're feeding back into here so they can even feed into the anti-barrel or go into the storage barrels. Uh, small problem though is I also need to link them up to the storage drawers here, which are going to be holding all of the uh, basically loot bag stuff that doesn't already fit in here. This is mainly just the mob drops. So yeah, this is kind of all backed up. Because the problem is these keep taking items into them which don't fit into here. So I need to get them hooked up to there. We're actually going to be dealing with that today. Uh, but yeah, let's go check out this fluid cow. It's yellow. Could be a few different things. Liquid glowstone. Interesting. What can we use liquid glowstone for? I mean, other than the obvious. Basic densifier will turn it into... Okay, so you can just turn it into glowstone. Okay. It's not the worst one I could think of. Although, we are getting glowstone dust from our mob farm anyway. Not a massive amount. We don't get that many witches spawning, but we do get the odd one. But yeah, what I wanted to do today, guys, is deal with our mob farm problem. And the way I'm going to do that is actually by getting into a different mod. Oh, and while we're here, uh, these seeds here are now tier 5, which is the... Yes, the Supremium level. I was going to wait until I got to Insanium to start actually mutating them again and getting the better crops. However, I kind of worked out that in order to do that... You need to have 256 stacks of Inferium Essence. I've got about 20 at the moment, so yeah, we're a little way off. But yeah, I've been trying to collect all of the uh, Inferium for that. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is start getting into Ender I.O., which is this one here under the Ada pack. Uh, to start off, we need an ender ingot, which is iron and ender pearl in a crafting grid. Um, do I have any ender pearls over there? Where are they? No, we for mob farm. I wonder if I've got any left over here. Oh, yes, we've got one left. Nice. Boom, one ender ingot, and that's one quest completed. Nice, so next up is the grains of bedrock. Now you get these by setting bedrock on fire, or through the ender crafter recipe. So I'm actually going to have a quick look at this. It says you can get it through the Ender Crafter recipe, which is Obsidian, Ender Pearl Powder, and Redstone. Okay, interesting. I think what we're going to do though is use the uh, setting the bedrock on fire method. Now, this is a 50% chance to get the grains of infinity. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like it's some form of bedrock, but I can't tell what. Uh, the way we're going to do this is actually by setting up an igniter. 
this thing here, which is Neverack, Cobblestone and Flint and Steel. And here we go. There is one, two, three and four igniters. I've also made up some timers to activate them. And I need a method of collecting the items as well. Alright, so I'm down here at the bedrock in the nether. Just stock this thing up with a few stacks of coal so I can continue producing ember shards and crystals when we get back into embers. And this is a setup I've created for the grains of infinity. Um, so basically you can see it's the igniter, which is uh, set to ignite. And it has a redstone timer from RF Tools, uh, which is giving it a signal every 180 ticks. Now there's a 50% chance every time the fire goes out that we're going to produce a grain of infinity, which the item collector is going to pick up and place in here. I've not bothered giving any storage upgrades as we're not going to need a whole lot more than 32 stacks of the stuff. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is once I've got um, a fair few bits of grains of infinity, we're going to use some for Ender Eye or some of it for mystical agriculture, and we're going to create the uh, grains of infinity seeds. Okay, so I grabbed a couple of stacks of Grains of Infinity. We're going to use half a stack to make up eight Grains of Infinity seeds. And I have already got an area uh, marked out for these. So we'll need some crop sticks. What I'm planning to do is, in these areas here, just have um, basically like a quarter of this patch be for one type of seed. So we're going to do Grains of Infinity here. Because you get 80 patches of dirt per 9x9 nine nine, uh, farming land. So 20 each. And we're just going to pop these down here. It says they're not going to grow at the current light level, but we're going to fix that uh, very soon. Nice. Now those should be able to grow across here. And um, they're only going to be 1, 1, 1. But I can't imagine we're going to need a massive amount of Grains of Infinity anywhere. So what I'm going to do is actually just here. Let's pop down a bit of dirt. Just re-haul um, those bits. I'm going to pop some extra light sources around here. And then around here as well, just to make sure everywhere is completely lit up. Uh, so our seeds can grow. Nice. So the next advancement in Ender IO is to make the simple machine chassis. Which is this thing here. And this is made of grains of infinity, iron ingots and iron bars. Which is easy enough to do. I do need to smelt down some more iron though. So let's grab a chunk of those and pop them in the smelter. All right, so that is a simple machine. Wow, that's difficult to say. It's a simple machine chassis made up. So let's collect that. Now that opens up a few different quests. We can do grainy capacitors, uh, which is what we're going to need to run a lot of our machines. And we've also got the first couple of basic Ender IO machines, which are the simple sag mill and the simple sterling generator. And we've also got the alloy smelter as well, which opens up a lot of new uh, materials, which we can start using to make uh, the different conduits, capacitors and such. All right, so using the simple machine chassis and a couple of items, we've now made a few different items. We've got the simple alloy smelters, the simple, simple sterling generator, which I need some stone bricks for. I thought it was all ready for this, apparently not. Oh, we need another furnace still. Let's grab a couple more of those. Simple sterling generator and the simple sag mills. Nice. So that gets us all three of these done. That means we can start making up some alloys. Uh, it also means we can get into the uh, better versions of these machines, but in order to do that, 
we need to actually start making some alloys such as the energetic alloy. I'll just put these guys down here for now next to the uh, sifting storage as we're going to be using some of the items from it. Now simple stone generators generate in energy from coal. You can see it does have a small bit of leakage so it's going to continue to use items even when the uh, power buffer is full. Same with these guys as well. Um, um, so we need to make dark steel which is iron, obsidian and apparently not coal. I'm sure it was coal. So dark steel ingot, alloy smelter. Aha, it's coal powder. So what we actually need to do is crush it using the uh, sag mill. And very soon we'll have pulverized coal, which if I pop that in there, you can see that's now working very, very slowly, but it is working to create dark steel. All right, the next thing we need to make up is the industrial dye blend, which is used to upgrade the simple machine chassis up to industrial machine chassis. These need a bunch of things. They need crushed quartz or never quartz dust, organic green dial, dial, dye, wow, words. Um, they also need some crushed lapis and some organic black dye. Uh, the crushed quartz we can get, um, we've got from the sifter anyway. Uh, lapis powder is a gift with the sag mill. Organic green dye is made from clippings and trimmings with either a slime ball or egg. Or you can use any kind of green pigment, slime balls and crushed coal. The organic black dye is pulverized coal with either a slime ball or egg. So those are going to be easy enough. I just need to collect the materials for them. Now I've got the um, organic black dye and I've got the lapis currently being crushed in the sag mill. Now the way I'm going to get the green dye is by shearing grass. So we're getting loads of bone meal through the um, mob farm. And yeah, we're going to run this through a sag mill. That's going to get us the uh, green pigment. And then we just need to combine that with some more slime balls for our organic green dye. And now we have everything. Here we go. That is 18 industrial dye blends. Nice. So what we need to do now is pop them in here with some simple machine chassis. I'm just going to do 10 of them. I'm going to save the rest of the machine chassis for other machines later. Okay, so first up we have the improved sag mill, which is using the simple sag mill in the industrial machine chassis, a couple of dark steel ingots, and these in dark bimetal gears, which are dark steel surrounded infinity bimetal gear, which is grains of infinity, iron, and iron nuggets. Boom, there's one done. Next up we've also got the upgraded alloy smelter is this guy here. Oh, we need a uh, simple powered furnace for that, or we can use a cauldron. Well, you know what? Since we don't have a simple powered furnace on us, let's just go with the cauldron recipe. Boom, there's that done as well. I always forget where this is. Ada, that's it. Um, we can also do the sterling generator and combustion generator now, but let's claim these first. So there's a 20 rack in the belly. Right, okay. Uh, so the sterling generator. There's that one done as well. Nice. Now, how do we do the combustion generator? Completing all the quests today. Okay, this needs a few things we don't actually have yet. Uh, fluid tanks. 
on difficult to get between some iron bars and glass with iron ingots and the electrical steel um, is crushed coal silicon and iron ingots now silicon we can get from smelting crushed quartz apparently interesting did not know that one ah they've changed the recipe now silicon used to be able to get through uh, Sagmill in sand, but I guess that's not the case anymore. But anyway, we can take these guys down now. We no longer need them because uh, we're going to be putting up the uh, advanced machines. All right, so I'm here over on the Ender.io platform, which I've just set up. Um, you can see here I've actually moved over the cobblestone generator. This is now upgraded to tier five, so that's the last of the cobblestone generation quests. Uh, still feeding into the crucibles, which are now sat on top of blaze meshes, which is what you get from compressing uh, blaze powder and feeding into the quantum tank. So we're already up to 5,611 buckets of lava. Uh, that's going really nicely. Uh, everything's keeping up. Storage drawers stayed full. Uh, the lava's continually being drained out, so that's cool. Um, what we need to do before we actually set up the machines is get some proper power generation going. So to start off with at least, I'm going to be using these magmatic generators from uh, Extra Utilities. Uh, we do need to fill up uh, a few buckets of lava first. So one for each. There we go. So that's eight magmatic generators. I do want to use um, possibly something from Thermal eventually. But for now, these will do. There we go. Uh, now all we need to do is start pumping the lava from the tank into these. Okay, so I've set up some of the uh, transfer nodes and transfer pipes from extra utilities as well. You can see these are now starting to light up. So they're filling up, they're producing power for us. Does it say how much we're generating? Doesn't unfortunately. Um, but the reason I've went with the one high instead of the two high like I had before is so we can have the energy conduits run along the top and we'll have some kind of power storage over in this corner and then we can set up our machines over on this side. So in order to store the power though again I'm actually going to make up a energy cell from thermal expansion which is a lead gear, glass and iron to make an energy cell frame. And then a redstone conductance core, which is electrum and redstone. Uh, some more lead ingots and a block of redstone. Boom, nice. Now I'm going to need some energy conduits, which I don't have just yet. I'm going to pop this guy down here. And you can see this guy is now going to drain his power into there. This can hold 20, is that 20 million? 2 million. 2 million RF. Now this is unupgraded, so you can upgrade it further using... Uh, Upgrade kits and conversion kits, uh, which I believe will increase the maximum to 50 million. Might be wrong on that, but I'm sure I'll find out eventually. But yeah, this one's draining power. We do need to connect the rest of these up as well. Uh, but what this means is we can actually start popping down our machines, which I believe are over here. Yes, there they are. Uh, we don't actually need that one. But we can pop down our sag mill and our oil smelter here for now. Now they do need capacitors to be able to take the power out of them. I did make up a couple of the basic capacitors, which we have here. So let's grab two of those. I got one of the um, premium wonder capacitor things. Uh, not too long ago from a mob farm. So I might have to check those out, see how those do. Oh, and uh, yeah, we need to go into configuration and output, output. Yep, so these guys are now filling up. Absolutely fantastic. So the first couple of things I want to do with my new machines is make up some energetic alloy. I think that's the right name for it. So this is going to be able to make the enhanced energy conduits, which are energetic alloy ingots and conduit binder. Our conduit binder is gravel, sand and clay. I've already got the clay balls here. 
I'm in the process of sagging down some cobblestone to get gravel and a little bit of sand. So I'm going to take some of this gravel and just hammer it down manually to speed up the process a little bit. Let's grab our hammer, we haven't done this for a while. Let me take our gravel and sand with our clay. And we make the conduit binder composite. Nice. Uh, what we can do with this is pop it into a furnace. Got a bit of traveling to do here. Pop that in there. And once this has been smelted down, this makes the conduit binder. So that's 12 energy Cali. That gets us the um, quest over here from the Ada pack. Now what we're going to do is make up one set of energy conduits and we're going to start running these across here. Take you off there. Ah, we're one shot aren't we? <laughs> ah, we are one shot. So I've now got the extra conduit and we're just going to pop that down on top of there. And we need to change the top of this to input. And you can see this is now absolutely whizzing through it. Um, it's currently draining all the power that's stored up in the magmatic generators themselves. And you can see we're still actually generating a fair bit of lava. It looks like we're losing a bit just as these um, finish draining all the power. But once this is filled up, that should start backing up again. So our energy cell is now completely full up. Well, that's 2 million RF ready to use. Um, put the sag mill and alloy smelter down here for now, link them up with the energy conduits. And what I've also done is I've done a bit more mystical agriculture. Uh, you can see what I've actually done now is split the uh, farmland into four by four grids. Uh, Cause what was happening is when I was trying to breed these up um they were linking well basically they were spread into the next plot over which i didn't want uh but yeah we've now got glowstone grins of infinity redstone and we've got the energetic alloy as well which is absolutely fantastic this is slowly filling up that area let's pop that in there Nice, so that just makes it a little bit easier to get some more alloy rather than having to smelt it down in the alloy smelter. But guys, unfortunately that is going to be it for this episode. It's been a weird week so I haven't had as much recording time and because of that this is going to be a slightly shorter episode so I'm really sorry for that but we'll be back very soon with some more content. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the video anyway. If you have, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because it really does help out the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.